big one. All right. Um, so it's great to be here. Thanks for um, for having us. Like I said, my name is uh, Hans Hall. I'm SVP of Business Operations at Avalanche, and we're a leader in gene therapy for the eye. I'm going to be making some forward-looking statements today as I tell you about the company. Um, and what we do at Avalanche is really work at the crossroads of gene therapy and ophthalmology, and we think this presents some exciting opportunities for patients both in large diseases like wet AMD and dry AMD, and also in rare genetic diseases of which there's many interesting opportunities in ophthalmology. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our lead product, AVA 101, which is under development for wet AMD, and also about our ocular biofactory, which is a platform technology for developing, uh, for discovering, developing, and importantly, manufacturing at scale um, novel AV vectors with improved properties. Um, and what that does is really gives us a product engine to advance molecules quickly through late stage research into early development and also presents opportunities for collaboration. So the ocular biofactory enables us to deliver therapeutic proteins over a long term to the eye. And the way it works is we combine a piece of therapeutic DNA with a novel AV vector that we've developed and deliver it to the retina. And the remarkable thing about doing gene therapy in the eye is because retinal cells are post-mitotic and because the eye is immune privileged, with a single administration, you're, allowed, you're able to deliver therapeutic benefit over years. So one of the things that got us very excited about the Ocular Biofactory as a platform technology for developing new therapies um, is that um, we're actually able to overcome some of the limitations of naturally occurring AV serotypes. And the way we do that is with a technology called directed evolution, in which we create large libraries of non-naturally occurring AVs and then screen them for desirable properties. So this can be applied to many different tissues. Here's an example where we've done this in the retina. Now the retina is actually comprised of multiple layers, um, and each layer has a distinct cell type, and each cell type has multiple distinct diseases that are associated with it. So what we're able to do is create a toolkit of vectors that allows us to go after different diseases in different layers of the retina. So let me talk a little bit about our product pipeline. AVA 101 is under development for wet AMD. Uh, it's currently uh, in phase 2A. It's a fully enrolled trial that's expected to read out in the middle of next year. Uh, AVA 101 is also under development for retinal vein occlusion and diabetic macular edema, which are the other two large neovascular indications. Um, AVA 201 is um, also an anti-VEGF target that's combined with one of our new vectors and is designed to be an intravitreal treatment for wet AMD. And what we're excited about that product is it's not only for the treatment of wet AMD, but potentially for the prevention of wet AMD. And I'll show you a little bit of proof of concept data on that product. Um, and then lastly, AVA 311 is the first product out of our Regeneron collaboration, and it's for the treatment of X-linked retinoschisis, which is a rare genetic disease. Um, and then in addition to what we've announced publicly, we also have an active R&D program and are advancing candidates through our pipeline, and we'll talk about those further as they move into the clinic. So AVA 101 um, should be, is a one-time subretinal injection that offers the potential for a functional cure or durable remission for wet AMD. And uh, as I mentioned, it's currently in uh, phase 2A, and uh, we've in fully enrolled a 32-patient trial in which we've shown, uh, at least in the phase 1, that the drug was well-tolerated with no drug-related adverse events. And importantly, the subjects in that one-year trial, which I'll tell you about a little more as we go along, maintained or in some cases gained vision. Um, AMD is a well-understood and large market, and we're excited about the product we made in this trial and expect to uh, read out the phase 2A in the middle of next year and then proceed later in the year to the subsequent trial. So here's the patient narrative for wet AMD. Patients initially start out with dry AMD and have relatively good vision in the 2020 to 2030 range um, and have some early lesions called drusen. Um, as they begin to, when they progress to wet AMD, their vision rapidly deteriorates as blood and fluid, fluid accumulates in the macula. Now, of course, without treatment, they rapidly progress to being blind and having scarring in the retina. Um, but since 2006, 
we've been in the anti-VEGF era where provided that patients adhere to a frequent regimen of anti-VEGF injections directly into their eyeball every four to eight weeks, you can see there's a demonstration here, um, they're able to maintain what we call cl chronic lesion status and um, typically their vision may stabilize at around 2060, which depending on what's happening with their other eye may or may not be driving and reading vision. So the molecule that's delivered by AVA 101 is called soluble FLIT and it's the body's naturally occurring VEGF inhibitor. Uh, here's a picture of uh, the molecule and uh, the binding domain is actually domain two. Um, as is shown here in this crystal structure, it has tremendously high affinity, 10 picomolar for uh, VEGF. And uh, interestingly is also the binding domain that was selected by our friends at Regeneron for ILEA. So in some ways we think of AVA 101 as the naturally occurring form of ILEA. So let me tell you a little bit about the clinical data to date on the product. Uh, we've done a phase one trial in eight patients. Uh, we've announced the 12 month results. The trial was designed as follows. There were two control patients, three high dose and three low dose. In the control patients, they were treated as an, on an ad need, as needed basis or so-called PRN therapy. With the treated patients, they were given an initial two loading doses of anti-VEGF therapy, which was then taken away and only reapplied on a rescue basis on predefined criteria by mask raters. Um, safety was the primary endpoint of that trial, and uh, what we saw is there were no drug-related adverse events. The adverse events that we did see were expected. They were mild, self-resolving, and related to the injection procedure, typically um, things you would expect from getting a needle in your eye. Um, there was no systemic safety events, particularly something you watch for in the VEGF classes, uh, arterial thrombolytic events, and we didn't see any, um, no clinically significant changes on the laboratory measurements. Um, and of course, we looked very carefully at biodistribution using a very specific and sensitive assay for the AVA 101 vector. We did not find it anywhere outside the eye. So we think of this as a truly local therapy. So let's talk about how the patients did in our study versus in previous studies. One of the nice things about wet AMD is that there's a rich body of existing clinical research. And what, what we typically see in patients that have been treated on an as-needed or PRN basis is that they receive between three and six injections per year. Um, and what we saw in our trial with the control arm, similar, which is that uh, the control patients acted as expected, receiving three injections over the course of the year, but the treated patients received 0.3 injections. So what that actually translates to is two-thirds of the patients did not receive any injection at all during the course of the study, and one-third of them received one injection. So we think that's a great outcome for patients, and obviously we're very excited about that product. Um, let's talk about AVA-201. Um, so this is, combines the same anti-VEGF target, soluble FLIT, with one of our next generation vectors, and it's designed to be an intravitreal one-time treatment for the prevention of wet AMD. We've shown in a non-human primate model proof of concept data, and we're very excited about this because we think this is a tremendous market opportunity and an opportunity for patients where there's high unmet medical need. There's actually 7.3 million patients at risk, at high risk for um, developing wet AMD in the U.S. alone, and there's no approved therapy for this indication. So here is um, uh, an animal model um, where, we sh where we demonstrated that we could prevent progression of the dry form to the wet form of AMD. Um, do I have a pointer? Maybe? Oh, well, we'll see. I'll just talk to it. Um, and uh, what, what, what was done here is this is a laser-induced injury model in a non-human primate. We gave the, gave the product at time zero, waited 16 months, and then attempted to induce neovascularization with a laser injury. So in the top control subject, uh, we applied the laser, and you can see that there's fluid developing where the blue arrows are. Um, we did the same in the bottom picture and we're not able to induce neovascularization. So this got us very excited as a proof of concept study to continue to develop this product for this indication. So AVA 301 is, um, as I said, is the first product coming out of the Regeneron collaboration um, and is for the treatment of juvenile X-linked retinoschisis. 
It uh, affects about 10,000 boys and young men in the United States. And these patients are missing the RS1 gene, which encodes a structural protein that maintains the integrity of the retina um, and uh, is currently under development by Regeneron. Um, so let's briefly talk about that collaboration. Uh, this is something we announced in May that we were very excited about. Um, we brought our ocular biofactory technology along with our manufacturing expertise and combined it with Regeneron's know-how and um, biological expertise. Um, the the uh, collaboration covers eight targets, of which we've announced one. And in addition to milestones and royalties, we have the opportunity on two of the, tar on two of the targets to um, opt in and co-fund and profit share up to 35%, which is meaningful economics for Avalanche. Um, importantly, and I get asked about this all the time, uh, AVA 101 is not partnered with Regeneron. Um, it is definitely the case that um, we think of them uh, as others as potentially excellent partners, uh, and we do have a plan to negotiate with them with really no obligation to partner. So if that's the right thing uh, for the product and for us, that's something we will certainly consider. So in closing, um, we're very excited about the potential for um, novel AVs uh, to address patient needs in the back of the eye. But we also think that um, the directed evolution approach provides um, exciting opportunities to collaborate outside of the ocular space, and that's part of the reason I'm here. So if that's uh, of interest to you, I'd encourage you to talk to me. Thanks. <laughs>